सो हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू दिस न्यू सेशन सो इन आवर प्रीवियस सेशन वी हैव डिस्कस्ड मेनी प्रॉब्लम्स रिलेटेड टू मैश एनालिसिस डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ प्रॉब्लम्स एंड वी हैव कम विद द कंक्लूजन दैट फॉर मैश एनालिसिस वी शुड बी यूजिंग द किच ऑफ वोल्टेज लॉक के वी एल एंड वी शुड बी फाइंडिंग द लूप करेंट्स ओके and using that loop current you should be satisfying some of the conditions that current across any resistor voltage through any res current through any resistors voltage across any resistance all of that okay we have solved problems now let's get to one more concept which is comes under mesh analysis only that is super mesh okay what is this super mesh exactly very easy concept nothing much to do in simple words if i explain you we, they, we would be having two loops like this okay whenever we have any current source between these between any two loops if if we have like this in one particular network whenever we have a current source between any two loops that two loops would be combined together to form a single loop okay this is the simple concept of super mesh nothing much rocket science is there whenever between any two loops we have one current source that two loops would be combining together and forming a single loop and that full loop is called as the super loop or super mesh another name is super loop or super mesh it is one and the same after finding that super loop you should be writing the separately you should be writing separately the super mesh equation or super loop equation and using that super mesh or super loop equation you should be trying to analyze the circuit and analyze the equations by solving it okay so this is the concept here and this is the definition part the some theory part if you in case you didn't understand my explanation you can look at here that is if there exist a current source in any of the branches of the network then loop cannot be defined through current source as drop across the current source is unknown then the loop existing around a current source which is common to the two loops is called as super mesh okay this is a uh, you cannot understand it because this is the standard definition i have tried to explain it here that only is the concept here okay that is whenever we have a current source between the two loops between any two loops okay that two loops would be combining together to form a single loop and that single loop is called as super mesh or a super loop okay this is clear and for that super mesh or super loop we should be writing the equation and solving the problems that i'll tell you while explaining the problems while solving uh, problems related to super mesh okay so let's solve one problem related to super mesh where you would be clear about the concept so now let's solve that so this is that problem the fifth problem of a super mesh concept find the power delivered by 4 ohm resistor we should be finding the power here our end end goal is to find the power delivered by this 4 ohm resistor using the concept of mesh analysis but here if you observe the circuit first of all in the exam you should be identifying the circuit correctly you should observe the circuit whenever we have a current source between the two loops then you should be applying the concept of super mesh okay that you should cannot be forgetting so here in this circuit we have one current source between two loops so we should be applying super mesh concept but before that here in the third loop i3 here you can see that we already have a current source so we can directly write i3 is equal to 2 ampere right but it is wrong it is not 2 ampere you can see the direction of loop which i have considered is like this but the direction of current is opposite so that's why we have opposite direction of loop and current so that's why our value of i3 is minus 2 ampere okay keep it in mind the direction matters a lot what what direction we give for loop and the direction of current source in that loop if it is the same then the value is positive if it is different then the value should be considering the negative current okay keep that in mind i know that negative current is invalid but we should be keeping this in mind okay so like this we have done the first step now we should be applying the kvl on the super mesh that is i've told you the concept right whenever we have a current source between two loops this whole this whole thing becomes one single loop and this current source we should not be considering the current source between two loops if you have one current source this whole loop would be becoming one single loop and that loop is called as super mesh okay so now let's apply that super mesh uh, apply kvl on super loop we should be applying kvl that is start from here start from here only 
super loop consider this as one single loop now this is the outward sign here minus 24 next is minus 1 into but while doing the super loop whatever the names we have given that should be remember uh, keeping in mind since here we know that this one ohm resistor is between i1 and i3 so i1 minus i3 but we know how we do have the value of i3 that is minus 2 ampere so i1 minus i3 so minus of minus 2 is plus 2 then next value is minus 3 into this is i2 it is in lies between i2 and i3 minus i3 so we have minus 2 so i2 plus 2 again then this is 4 minus 4 and this is the loop current here i2 equal to 0 hope this is clear this is the complete super mesh equation now again the same thing solve minus i1 minus 2 minus 3 i2 minus plus minus 3 to the 6 minus 4 i2 equal to 0 so we have only one i1 term minus i1 minus 3 minus 4 minus 7 i2 equal to minus 6 minus 2 that is minus 8 minus 24 that is minus 32 if you bring it to the other side it will be plus 32 so this is our first equation name it as equation 1 now apply kvl on loop 2 that is this loop don't apply kvl on i3 because we have already find the found the i3 current apply kvl on loop 2 now So sorry we cannot apply the KVL on loop 2 because we have one current source. So that's why what we should be doing is since we have current source between these two loops so we know that we can do I2 minus I1 is equal to 8 ampere. Why because whenever we have current source between two loops after, uh, after we write the super mesh equation one equation we got okay but we directly cannot find the uh, uh, write the equation of uh, I2 because here we have one current source right so whenever we have a current source we I've told you right that direct uh, uh, that whole loop would be having that current so we cannot be writing the equation like that so what we'll be doing is since we have an 8 ampere current between these two loops the greater loop current minus the smaller loop current is equal to 8 ampere write it like this then uh, solve like this that is so you keep it uh, uh, minus I1 is equal to 8 into minus i2 or this minus sign if you want to neglect i1 is equal to complete multiply minus sign here that is minus 8 plus i2 so keep this equation and name it as equation 2 okay now we have kept here why we have solved it because if we substitute the value of i1 in this equation here this equation would be consi consisting of only i2 terms and we would be getting i2 okay so that's why i have done like that so now consider equation 1 in that equation 1 substitute the value of i1 as minus 8 plus i2 minus 7 i2 plus uh, equal to 32 that is 8 minus i2 minus 7 i2 equal to 32 that is minus 1 minus 7 is minus 8 i2 equal to 32 minus 8 that is 26 so that is 24 so i2 is equal to minus 24 by 8 that is minus 3 ampere again okay this is the value of i2 we have got so now this i2 substitute back in equation 2 so that we will be getting our i1 current i1 is equal to minus 8 plus minus 3 that is i1 is equal to minus 11 ampere okay hope this is clear like this you should be solving but here our goal is to find the power delivered by 4 ohm resistor that is p is equal to we have two equations for p that is one is uh, v into i sorry three equations one is v square by r and p is equal to i square r but here power delivered through 4 ohm resistor we have the value of uh, resistor as 4 but 
this in these three equation this equation holds good because we have the values of current already we don't have have the values of voltages so use this equation p is equal to i square r that is power delivered by 4 ohm resistor is equal to i square that is this 4 ohm lies in this loop i2 right so that's why the i2 current value what you have got minus 3 whole square into 4 minus 3 whole square is 9 into 4 so our final answer of power is equal to 36 watt 9 4 the 36 right so this is our answer 36 watt power delivered by 4 ohm resistor is 36 watt like this we have solved take down this problem very important okay let's solve one more problem now so now this is one tricky problem here okay where here we have this diamond shape in this circuit below and if you recall what I have told in my starting sessions or starting videos what this diamond shape represents if you have answered it congratulations it represents a dependent source right so now we got one problem where we are having one dependent source and that dependent source can you name that dependent source so those who know it very good but those who don't know it I am going to tell you since here we have 15 I but here this is the voltage source so that's why this is a current controlled voltage source that is IC BS okay I have told you four types of dependent sources that is one is voltage control voltage source voltage control current source current control voltage source voltage uh, current control current source so in this we have got ICVS kind of dependent source here where we have the value of this dependent source as 15 I and here we have minus plus okay and this current I lies in this loop here that is I1 so we can first thing we can conclude here is small letter I is equal to I1 so this I is equal to I1 because this I is in this loop right it flows through this loop so that's why the small letter I is equal to I1 that is one uh, drawback and one more drawback here is we have written three loop equations I1, I2 and I3 but in case of uh, writing the loop equations what we, we have this dependent source between these two loops right but when we write the loop equations you should be very careful because this dependent source whatever sign is there right minus plus it is constant we cannot change this sign that is if you look at from here this is the outward sign minus but if you look at from here this is the outward sign plus this is not minus because for two different loops have to whenever we have resistor we have plus minus plus minus the signs change but for this the signs won't be changing okay that's one difference so I'll tell you while solving the problem only very easy problem okay don't make it complicated nothing much to do apply the loop analysis only okay apply KVL on this loop one now first loop okay this is the first loop okay start from here that is 100 plus 100 then we have a uh, minus 10 and the loop current is I1 then we have minus 20 I1 minus it 20 is between I1 and I2 so I1 minus I2 then we have minus 30 I1 minus I3 equal to 0 solve this 100 minus 10 I1 minus 20 I1 plus 20 I2 minus 30 I1 plus 30 i3 equal to 0 that is group all the i1 terms that is first is we have 10 20 30 minus 10 minus 20 minus 30 that is minus 60 i1 then we have plus 20 i2 then we have plus 30 i3 equal to 100 if you bring it to other side it would be minus 100 but if you see that we can divide this whole equation by 10 because all are of multiples of 10 so in order to reduce the calculation divide by 10 so that is minus 6 i1 plus 2 i2 plus 3 i3 equal to minus 10 okay now this you name it as equation 1 now apply KVL on loop 2 now okay that is this loop start from this resistor only 
आउटवर्ड साइन इज माइनस ट्वेंटी आई टू माइनस आई वन बिकॉज वी आर कंसिडरिंग लू पाई टू एंड दिस इज बिटवीन आई टू एंड आई वन देन वी हैव आउटवर्ड साइन इज प्लस थर्टी देन इफ यू लुक इट फ्रॉम हियर वी हैव दिस इज द माइनस साइन हियर माइनस फिफ्टीन आई ओके द वैल्यू इज फिफ्टीन आई बट वी नो दैट स्मॉल लेटर आई इज डिपेंडेंट हियर दैट आई इज मार्क्ड हियर so that's why if this i and this current i and i1 are equal because it travels in the same loop so i equal to i1 so that's why in case of in place of this i i am substituting it as i1 okay hope this is clear that is equal to 0 so now solve minus 20 i2 plus 20 i1 plus 30 minus 15 i1 equal to 0 20 minus 15 is 5 i1 minus 20 i2 30 bring it to other side it would be minus 30 okay this you name it as equation 2 now same thing apply kvl on loop 3 again this loop okay start from this dependent source only the outward sign here in this case is plus not minus because i have told you that in uh, in case of dependent source don't check for uh, signs in both the sides the signs would be fixed for dependent source so for this loop also the outward sign here is plus so that's why we would be writing plus 15 i so the value of i is i1 minus 40 loop current is i3 then we have minus 30 into i3 minus i1 equal to 0 so that is 15 i1 minus 40 i3 Minus thirty i three plus thirty i one equal to zero. Fifteen plus thirty is forty five i one. Minus forty minus thirty is minus seventy i three equal to zero. So this is our third equation. Like this, we got three equations here. So now we should be finding the values of i one, i two, i three. Okay. So. Here, did I tell you the question first of all? No, right? So here the question is find current through and voltage across 40 ohm resistance. Okay, if I am not told, that's the question. So these three equations again: mode, equation number two, because we are finding three currents. Put the values of the coefficients. Start from I one. First is minus six, two, three. Minus ten, five, minus twenty. Then the I three current, I three is not there, but the coefficient is zero because I three is not there. Then minus thirty. Don't forget that. Here also forty five. I two is not there, so zero minus seventy zero. So our first current is three point six four ampere. Second current is two point four one ampere. Third current is two point three four ampere. Like this, you got three currents. But here they have told us to find the current through and voltage across forty ohm resistor. And but this forty ohm resistor lies in this third loop I three. So that's why current through forty ohm resistor is equal to I three. So I of forty ohm is equal to. 2.34 ampere. So voltage across 40 ohm is equal to I into R. That is 2.34 into value of resistor is 40. If we solve it, we would be getting 93.6 volt. Okay, you can check it later. So this is the answer here. Hope this is clear. Hope this sum is clear. Dependent source problem. I have tried to explain it as much as possible. Note this down, guys. If you did not understand, watch the video again. I've tried to explain it in a clear fashion. So that's all, guys. Like, share, subscribe to our channel. Share this playlist of network analysis to a huge number, especially for backlog students. Then also, this uh, is uh, beneficial for all the third sem students, current third sem students who are studying. Those people also, those who are uh, your juniors, you can share it. Share them. So that's all, guys. Also, uh, other subjects related to uh, control system electromagnetic theory, in the it's available in the description. Uh, like share subscribe to our channel guys your like would be motivating us that's all guys thank you